Hello everyone, today I will be talking about Scratch 3.0's newest editor and sharing some of my opinions about it. If you don't know already, uh, Scratch 3.0 was released just a few days ago, and as you can see, there is a complete change in the layout, and I spent a couple of days playing around with the editor to get a feel of things and see what's new. Anyways, just as a disclaimer, these are only my opinions, and they might be different than other people's. Um, I also might repeat some things that other people have already pointed out, so sorry in advance. Um, also, I know that the Scratch team worked really hard on Scratch 3.0, so I really appreciate that, and I'm keeping that in mind. Anyways, I noticed that Scratch 3.0 had a much more, I guess, uh, softer look compared to Scratch 2.0. Uh, looking back, Scratch 2.0 had a sort of more antique look to it, but now everything looks more round and bubbly, in a sense. So I think it was because the Scratch 3.0's editor was maybe geared towards a younger audience, and also so that people who were using Scratch for the first time could understand it easier. But yeah, um, anyways, I'll talk about the blocks first. So the first thing I noticed when I saw the blocks were that the blocks were uh, way too thick. Uh, to me, they don't really seem natural, I guess. Like... They're sort of too squished together, and they take up a lot of space. And I know that Scratch 3.0 was made so that it was easier for tablet and mobile users to use, but I think even if the blocks were um, skinnier, tablet and mobile users could still easily drag it, and it would definitely be easier for us computer users too. So I think these uh, blocks need some tweaking, and I also think that these uh, number circle things are too large, because there's a lot of space around the number, so I think if the circles were smaller, it would look better, and then it would be easier to make the blocks thinner. Now, the second thing I noticed about the blocks were that the font was really thin on the blocks. I think um, Scratch 2.0 had a bolded font on the blocks that were way easier to read, and I think it puts sort of less strain on the eyes, so the bolded font uh, right here actually works pretty well, so I think the font on these blocks could maybe be replaced by a similar font, like this bolded font, so the blocks are maybe easier to read. And personally, I think the event blocks should maybe be a darker color, because number one, it's really similar to the color of the control blocks, and uh, number two, I get this sort of feeling that event blocks signify the beginning of your block or your code, so I think it might be better if it resembled a darker color, but yeah. So uh, moving on, I also thought that the block area was way too small. I mean the area where you can, you know, drag in your blocks. It's really, really small. I think it's sort of hard for people who want to make large projects to, you know, organize their code or look through it and stuff like that. So I believe this area can definitely be bigger, and I know that there's the small project player view, which makes the area a bit bigger, but you still have pretty limited space given the size of these blocks, and you sort of have limited functionality in the project player area, so, you know, I don't really prefer this mode. But I think what can be done to, you know, sort of increase some of this workspace is to maybe move these uh, block shortcut buttons to the top area over here. So instead of one column of nine buttons, I think, yeah, nine buttons, um, we can have two rows of five and four buttons. So it would be like motion over here, and then looks, and then sound, and then events, and then control, and then sensing, and then operators, and then variables, and then my blocks. And I think that it can save space, or actually add space over here, and also be easier to read, I guess because it's easier to glance through two rows rather than one column. So yeah. Oh, and by the way, I actually really like that Scratch 3.0 has the ability to drag around your uh, block area, because for me, sometimes using these scroll bars were tedious, especially if I had uh, large projects. So I really like the dragging added to um, the new editor. But now on to the project player area. So, of course, the first thing I noticed was that the area was moved from the left to the right, and that's not really a big deal. I'll just get used to it, so, um, yeah. And I also noticed that the sprite descriptions were now shown permanently, and I think that's pretty good because if you have, let's say, a large project and you have uh, multiple sprites, 
you can quickly go through them and still see their descriptions. You know, maybe check if they're shown or not, or check their size or X or Y position, and stuff like that. So, I think that's good. However, I think that the description is way too spaced out, and it sort of limits space for the uh, sprites. Because right now, I think you, you can only fit, like, maybe 9 sprites here. And if you have large projects, then it might be annoying to not be able to see all your sprites at once or to scroll through a lot. So I think it would be better if there were more space to the sprites. And the description can definitely be cut down or be more compact. And especially these uh, number bubbles or these bubbles over here. Again, these bubbles can be decreased and therefore the description can take up less space and there would be maybe room for an extra row of sprites. So yeah, and I actually have a um, suggestion for the X coordinates, Y coordinates, and size and direction. Um, so I use Unity, which is a game engine, and what Unity does is that you have the ability to um, change a value, let's say the X position of an object by holding your mouse near um, this area and then dragging your mouse left or right. And then the sprite moves left or right based on how much you dragged your mouse. And I think the editor should have this because it's a quick way of changing, you know, these values without having to type in numbers on your keyboard. And if you're not really sure, for example, where a sprite should be positioned, you can just drag these X and Y values and the sprite could be moved accordingly. So, um, yeah. Anyways, now I'll talk about the costumes tab over here. And, um, oh yeah, uh, first of all, I actually like a lot of these new um, default images, you know, like these vector ones, and I think they're uh, really good and give a sort of, you know, scratch type of feel. So yeah, I like these new images. But anyways, again, I'd say that this um, costume editing page has a lot of empty space, as you can tell uh, right here and over here. You know, and this empty space like really limits the space that you can edit and draw your images in. So I think this image drawing area should definitely be expanded into the empty space. And um, another thing are the colors. I think um, honestly, I don't have that big of a problem with the new um, color picker or not color picker, but color choosing system. But I think. Scratch 3.0 should still have the default color palette, you know, on the side because if you want one of those specific colors, you can get it easily or you can quickly choose between the different colors. So I think the default color should still be here. But um, anyways, oh yeah, the new color picker is also really good because there's a magnifying glass so you can precisely choose the color you want. So yeah, that was a good upgrade. Uh, let's see, now I'll talk about vector mode. So about vector mode, so let's see, I'll convert to vector and I didn't really see any big problems with vector mode, but I did notice that the new um, reshape tool is way better. So let me first go to the scratch cat. Um, okay, so I'd say that the new reshape tool is a lot better because before in scratch 2.0, Let's say if I wanted to reshape a point over here, it sometimes might have glitched out and reshaped a point over here or something like that. And it was especially common in straight lines or triangles. But now in the Scratch 3.0 editor, if I wanted to create a point, let's say right here, it creates one right here. And it doesn't like not create a point or accidentally create a point somewhere else. So the new reshape tool is definitely better because it's a lot more accurate and there's also these two like handles to these points and that's a good addition too because you can create smooth curves and this sort of uh, resembles Inkscape's uh, point tool which also has these so yeah I think that's good but anyways um, oh yeah a major change to vector was that now there's a outline picker I guess you can choose the color like you can first edit the outline and then choose the color and then choose the thickness. So I think that's pretty useful. And another thing I noticed was that the eraser tool is now in vector mode and it's actually pretty useful because when you, let's say, erase this part, 
it actually leaves the outline or it actually uh, draws a new outline uh, filling the gap. So I'd say it's pretty useful. Let's say if you were to create a racetrack for your game, you could just draw a circle, let's say, with an outline. And then when you erase part of it, it would create the racetrack like that. So with the new eraser tool, you can easily sort of create racetracks. So um, yeah. Anyways, I'll now talk about bitmap mode. So let's see. Oh yeah, the first thing I noticed was that there's now no slider for these brush sizes and eraser sizes. And I think the scratch team should bring the slider back, but of course keep the uh, number uh, size chooser. But the main reason I like the slider was because you can get the size you want on the slider quickly. But now, um, with only the number chooser, you have to actually manually type in your number or, you know, use these arrows. And um, I commonly use bitmap for my scratch games, and I always make pixel art in it. And with the slider, I can quickly, you know, slide between the two sizes that I commonly use, which is size 1 and size 4. But uh, with this, I have to type in the number, like size 4, and then I have to type in 1 to get my desired size. Or actually, sorry, two, size two. So yeah, but honestly, I thought it was easier with the slider. So yeah, but another thing I noticed was that um, there's now more increments uh, per square. So if you don't use bitmap that much or know that much about it, this might seem a bit confusing. But to those who do use it a lot, you'll know what I mean. So now there's, um, I think, five increments per square when you move like your pixel brush so like one two three four or actually four sorry so but anyways now there's four increments per square when you move your pixel brush like one two three four but um before in scratch 2.0 there were only two so it would be like one and then two and that made pixel art a lot easier because you can you know zoom out a lot and then quickly place your pixels pretty accurately but now that there's uh, four increments per square it's a lot harder to you know um, get the pixel art just right because occasionally you might place your pixel uh, one increment to the left or right on accident and then it look weird so for example let's say I wanted to place a pixel right here right but then if I was zoomed out since this um, is more accurate I'd accidentally place a pixel right here instead of right here. So yeah, that's sort of something I didn't really like with the new bitmap editor, but that's okay. Um, oh yeah, another thing I noticed was that for for some reason um, these pixels like over here on the tool icons and also on the project player were either blurry or out of shape. I think like some of these tools, the pixels on it are slightly blurry which is not that big of a deal, of course, but I'm just pointing that out. And also, the pixels over here are sort of disoriented or out of shape. I'm not sure if you can see it right here, but some of these are larger than the other, and some of these aren't perfectly square. So, you know, that's sort of a problem if I were to make more pixel art in my games, or if other scratchers do that. So, yeah. Um, but that's all I could find for the bitmap mode. But now I'll move on to the sounds. Um, I'd say that the sound tools are definitely a lot better. I'd say sound editing is, I guess, easier. Um, a lot of these tools are pretty easy to use, and some of these are really useful. Uh, for example, the trim tool. Now you can easily trim it like by dragging it, and that means you can get it really accurately. And then, of course, now you have your new trimmed sound. And also, another small thing I noticed was that now um, you can make your sounds as loud as you want, past the maximum sound threshold. And I'm not going to click it right now because it's going to be really loud. But anyways, before in Scratch 2.0, um, for example, if I wanted to add some uh, video game music to my game, if there were some parts of the music that reached the maximum loudness limit, then I couldn't make the entire music louder because some specific parts reached the maximum uh, sound like threshold. But uh, now you can make your sounds as loud as you want, so that's pretty good. But yeah. 
Anyways, to recap, uh, Scratch 3.0 definitely has great potential, but there are some things that need to be tweaked and fixed, especially the layout. But there were some cool new features or uh, upgraded features though. Anyways, those are just my thoughts about Scratch 3.0. Uh, be sure to tell me what you think about Scratch 3.0 in the comments below, and make sure to subscribe as I will be posting some more game tutorials with Scratch 3.0. Anyways, that's it for this video. See ya.